If you fly micro drones, race gates can make it even more fun, especially if the gates have lights. I wanted some micro drone gates, so I looked around and was surprised by how expensive they are, especially for ones with lights. And a lot of them seem just a little too small for some of my friends to have fun flying through. This is a small series of videos showing how I built some LED light race gates for really cheap, starting around $4 for gates with single color LEDs and starting under $6 for gates with RGB LEDs. There will be multiple videos showing different parts and variations of gates I designed and made. The materials you're going to need to build the hoop of the gate are tubing and lights. This is the tubing I used. It's called poly tubing. Its size is a half inch inner diameter. It's 5 8 inch outer diameter. And I bought 100 feet of it. it cost about $20 for 100 feet. And I bought a lot because I wanted to get it at the lowest price per foot. But I also wanted to make a lot of gates. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on the tubing. So I did a lot of searching and $20 for 100 feet of tubing that works right. That's a fantastic fantastic deal. Here's a better look at the label for this tubing. You can see the size right here. And then here's the part number, the company that it came from, just some general information so you can find it yourself. But I will include a link in the description below so you can easily find it. This particular tubing is great because it's soft enough that it can bend to any shape you need, but it's also stiff enough to hold its shape so you don't need any supports for the hoop other than at the base. This tubing is translucent, so it allows light to shine through. It's not so transparent that you see all the wires and you see all the LED circuitry inside. So I think it makes a good hoop that glows nicely. As far as lights go, there's a lot of options. The options I'm going to be using in this video are some of the least expensive ones. I was able to find these LEDs. They're called fairy lights. They come all wound up here. They're run by a battery pack. I got these for about $2.50. It's a good option if you want just some sort of LED light inside of your gate. These particular fairy lights are three meters long and that's too long for a gate. But later in the video, I'll explain what I do to make it work. My favorite kind of LED lights are called RGB LED lights. That means they can actually change to different colors and that makes the gate more interesting if it's changing colors. There are two types of RGB LED lights. There's addressable LEDs and non-addressable. Addressable means you can have different patterns going throughout the whole LED strip or throughout the whole gate. Non-addressable means the whole gate changes color but it only changes to the same color throughout the whole gate. These particular ones here, these are addressable RGB LEDs. This particular one comes with a remote to control it and it comes with a USB power plug here and then this just plugs in right here. RGB LEDs tend to start around four dollars and sometimes if you look hard you can actually find addressable RGB LED strips for four dollars with a power adapter. There are many types of LEDs to put into the gate. These are just the ones that I put in the gates that I'm building for this video. I'll make another video that will explain a lot more in depth about different types of lights to put in gates and the different types of electronics to power the lights. I will also put links in the description below for the tubing I used and for the different LED strips that I used. For these gates, I got two different kinds of lights. I got these. Some people call them fairy string lights, but they're LEDs that are attached to these wires. Those were three meters long. And then I got these RGB LED strips. I believe these are one meter long. So now I need to cut tubing that can fit these. Unplugging this wire here makes it a little easier to work with, but you have to make sure you plug it back in correctly. You need to make sure that the black or the white wire, on some of mine that it's black, on some it's white, but the green, the red, and the blue are always the same on all of mine. You need to make sure that that one that's either black or white that lines up with this arrow here lines up with the arrow that's on here. So that means you need to turn it that way. Arrow here, arrow here. Should be good. The LED part of the LED strip measures out to be about 40 inches, which means the tube needs to be a little longer than that. Originally, I did an extra inch on each side and that worked for the shorter pegs, but now I need an extra inch and a half on each side, but it would be even easier to use if I did two extra inches. I cut the first two tubes I made to 42 inches. I'm gonna cut this next tube to 44. The tubing I got is in this box. 
It's one half inch inner diameter, five eighths inch outer diameter. It's a hundred feet, so it'll make a lot of gates and it's poly tubing. The tubing itself, is white and it's translucent, which is great. I like this better than transparent because it disperses the light, makes it look a little more even, and I think it just overall looks better. This tubing is pretty stiff. Now I'm using some gardening shears here. They cut the tubing very well. Measure twice, cut once. I like to measure maybe three times. It's gonna be right about here. Try and cut it straight. That just Makes it work better later. That's actually the straightest one I've cut. Okay, 44 inch tube. Getting the LEDs inside this tube can be kind of tricky. This rubber sticks to the plastic. It doesn't slide. It will eventually jam and not go anymore after just a short distance. There's a lot of tricks I figured out, but one trick is instead of turning the LEDs out of the bend, turn them in. Put them in so they curl in an opposite direction. It actually slides significantly better than the other way. One of my gates, this went in all the way, no problem. My second gate, it started to jam near the end and I couldn't get it rather than laying it flat it's gonna be harder have gravity help and another thing is if it really starts to jam which this one did not use the hand holding the tube to push and bang on the tube and that can help it get through I need it to come back just a little bit <laughs> it doesn't want to there's a few inches without lights down there there's a few inches without lights down here I think this is gonna work great the tubing has letters on it and numbers and that looks terrible take your trusty sanding block and just lightly sand the spots where all the numbers and letters are and they're gone. And it makes it a little more translucent there, a little less transparent, but the light will come through no problem. So that got rid of those ones. We'll come over here to all these ones along here. Don't go too fast with this or you'll heat up the plastic and leave kind of deeper heated gouge marks. I did that on one of mine. Just lightly sand it. There's the last remains right there. This is the easiest part. Here's another set. So let's go after that. Those are all gone. And then here's the last set of numbers and letters. And that's gone. Here's one little trick I learned. You take a paper towel, get it completely wet, then squeeze it until there's very little water that can drip out. So it's just a damp rag. And take anything that's dusty, which would be this tube because I just sanded it and there's plastic dust all over it, and just quickly wipe it all. You do this and it takes all the powder off and then it's not gonna get powder on anything. You can also do this to the wood pieces, just a lightly damp rag. Go over them, it'll take all that sawdust off. That piece is completely done. These rods go on the base. That one's done. Now that gate is completely done and ready to go to the race tomorrow night. My fairy lights are about three meters long. That's gonna be really hard to get through the tube and also they're spaced pretty far apart. So I decided I'd fold them in half because a three meter tube would be a huge gate. I'm folding them in half to double the amount of lights so that the gate's smaller. I have no way to get them through the tube. So I had this idea that I'd take some string, get this little metal piece here that I'm probably never gonna use, get some tape, attach this all together here just wrap this up. My idea is maybe this can fall down more easily through the tube. The tube, I've already cut it. I figured out that the fairy lights folded in half for about 60 inches. This tube is 62 inches. I wish I'd cut it a little longer at the time, but back then I didn't know. Drop that in. It actually goes pretty easily. I'm holding this straight up vertical right now and lowering string through the top. I don't want it to go all the way through. I need to have some string on this side still. I got it to where it's coming out of both sides. Here's the fairy lights. I want them approximately folded in half. I want to line them up so that the lights go halfway between the lights of the opposite side, like this. Then it makes the lights twice as often. Here is the middle. Now that I have that done, uh-oh, oh no. Should have done something to stop that from going back in. Maybe I can go in here with a drill bit and grab it. I had it. Got it. I should have made this even longer. I'm going to attach this by looping the string through the bend of the halfway point. And I'm gonna loop it through twice because it came out of the tape on my last attempt. It's a little bit of a knot there. I'll put tape around that. And this should not come apart. So now I need to get this to fall back through. I 
have it in one side. So now I should be able to pull all these fairy lights straight into the tube. Just pull slow and steady to make sure nothing gets damaged. And it looks like it's working. It's getting harder to pull. I'm so close. Okay, I made it. So now I'm gonna undo this tape. Undo the string. And that's it. Make sure to watch part one, which explains how to make a portable wood base for the gate, and then part three, which explains how to do the final assembly. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.